What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here. Now we have a less than impressive record when it comes to T20 batting. I think we have 43 runs in 4 innings and an average of about 14, which for a number 6 is not great. We really do want to go and lift that average up. The strike rate probably is quite good, but only to average 14, not good enough. Not good enough in this side. We need to go and make things better, try and get some runs on the board and get some decent scores. No 50s in there obviously because we haven't made over 50 runs total in our career in the T20 to date. But as a team, we're doing pretty well. Four for 100 coming to the back end of the 10th over. And Jimmy Faulkner is one of those guys who is very hard for me to get away. I just do struggle, really struggle, to go and put him away uh, to the boundary. So today we are playing in the third... Ah, oh, finally we get one. Get one down the ground, and we will keep the strike. But playing in the third T20 International into this three-game series, currently locked at 1-1. So this is a very crucial game. Unlike, I think, last week where we played a three-match series, one-day series, and we were up 2-0 uh, from the get-go. So a little bit more work to do and a little bit more pressure. But um, myself and McCullum, hopefully we can... Uh, I was going to say, hopefully we can bat a good amount of time. That one there came right off the middle of the bat, but straight to the fielder. We just need to go and get it into that gap there. That cover gap that we are so used to playing through is going to hopefully be uh, our area of expertise. But we'll take that as well. We will take a big, thick outside edge. <sighs> was thinking about coming back for two, but the fielder actually got around there quite quick. And at the moment, we are struggling just a little bit. Four off five, I believe, or maybe four off six. Um, really do need, I was going to say, it would be nice if they did have a spinner that did come on, but the one good thing is, is that we are in a very good, uh, well, we're in a very good space, and that there is going to help our confidence a hell of a lot more. Nice wee ramp, it probably was on about off stump, but it has been run away fine. Moves us to 8 off 7, and uh, our strike rate for the first time in this game has moved above. 100 and that one there was quite wide probably if it was left it could have been close uh, to being called a wide but we do go and just run it down McCullum 21 off 11 so he is definitely um, he's the the boss in this situation we, we shall say he's the guy who is going and doing most of the damage but if we can just continue to do what we've been doing you know rotating the strike picking up those singles the odd boundary here and there which hopefully we can go and do we will be looking at a very competitive score close maybe uh, even to a 200 score if we can start to get our move on and that's what we were looking for last over that shot through the covers it may not have enough in fact it doesn't have enough to go for a boundary four but we will scamper back for the three and I'm happy with that if we can get three rotate the strike get McCullum on strike because he is the pinch hitter he's the main hitter uh, at the moment and a spinner And we will just take Glenn Maxwell to the cleaners. He's gone for four. We move on to 16, past our average, which is what we like to see. And McCullum did struggle a little bit in that last over. It wasn't until uh, the fifth ball that he did actually manage to go and pick up a single. So his strike rate has slowed uh, quite considerably. He still is playing uh, a fairly good knock. But now that we are starting to go and find some gaps and find a little bit of form, uh, that does make things a lot easier on both him and the team because we are still looking around that 190-200 score which would be uh, very very good that is what we are aiming for with just about four overs left to go so this is quite strange that we are actually getting quite a lot of batting in today because normally it is well normally we do struggle or we fail or things just don't go away from this situation here so um, I was going to say I do need to watch out because Mitchell Stark is going to prove a whole lot harder than Faulkner, Watson, and Maxwell. He is the premier bowler. I believe he is coming back um, in just a couple of days to play in the Tri-Series in the West Indies. And uh, McCullum, McCullum's got to move on, so that's good. And I think it's time we get to move on as well, especially against Maxwell, because if we can pick up four and then maybe another four or a six here, um, it is really going to help move us along. With the field up as well, the field is definitely up, and uh, it is time that we did... As I said, get a little bit of a move on. But just as we try and do that, we do manage to go and get a fine, faint little edge onto one. 24 or 15, which isn't the worst effort in the world, but it was getting uh, to that stage in the innings, in the innings sorry, that we did need to start going for it and start trying uh, to attack the bowlers. And I think with Mitchell Stark coming in in the next over, um, it was always going to be difficult. So trying to take Glenn Maxwell then and there was the thing to do. And surprisingly enough, we are actually going to be opening the bowling from the other end. So um, 
up against Warner and Finch, which never is going to be an easy time. And hopefully we can go and bang in some Yorkers uh, for the first couple of balls, just to go and try and keep the runs down. Because at this stage, um, at this stage of the innings, when it comes to me bowling, really my my goal here is not to go for boundaries. It's not to leak runs. It's just to go and push the run rate up. And uh, when the field does spread, then we can go pull the length back a little bit and really try and uh, assist. But we'll take that. If Warner wants to cream one straight to, I think it is Neil Wagner at short cover. It is Neil Wagner. Beautiful bit of fielding. Um, but if he wants to cream one straight there, I'm not opposed to that. I will definitely go and take that. And that is even more perfect uh, than we could have asked for. We were after the, uh, well, it was the, the economy that we were after. But as I said, we will definitely, definitely go and take that wicket. And if we can go and complete a wicket maiden to start off. Maidens don't happen very often in T20s. Um, and there's an example why. Because it is such a batsman's game. And it is such a game that, you know, batsmen can go and excel quite well. They are going to pick up three, which isn't the end of the world. One for three off the first five in the power play. First, uh, first over of the game as well. First over of the inning, sorry, not of the game. And, you know, we will definitely go and take that. So, Wagner again. Absolutely outstanding in its short cover, son. You have had a, sp uh, a, sp a, sp a sp spatendous? What am I trying to say? Sp an amazing first over fielding. We'll just go with that. We will just go with that. So, good start. Whoever bowled the second over, I believe, got taken for a few. And it is looking as though we are going to get taken for a few as well. That one there, just too close on the pads. And it is easy pickings for Finch, who does just go and, as I said, flick it away. But we only went for three in our first over. So 16 coming off whoever bowled the other one. And we have a bit of work to do here now after going for that four first ball. I think in T20, and this is not due to playing experience. This is due to observational experience. Um, especially when you are chasing a total and you're chasing... Uh, you know, you need your run rate to stay, let's say, up above 8. I mean, in this situation, it's above 9. But if you do what they have done so far this over Australia, if you get a boundary off those first couple of balls, it takes the pressure off you as a batsman. And it means that you can go and just nudge the others around around for a 1 and a 2. And you're not looking for a boundary ball late in the over. Because quite often, it is that boundary ball at the end of the over that will be your downfall. It will be where the wicket will come from. It will be where the mistake comes from that leads to your wicket. So if you can get one away early on, as they have done here, they got two in the first three balls, it does go and make things easier uh, for the rest of the over. Mind you, they have only got nine there. Um, but, you know, if you go outside of power play restrictions, shall we say, and as I said, you're chasing eight. If you get that wicket first up, uh, sorry, if you get that four first up, it is going to make it ten. It's going to make it ten times easier to go and just, you know, stay with the required run rate for that over. It is just going to make it so much easier. So um, now that we have had a little bit of time, I'm going to bring the length back just a touch to see if that does go uh, and make a little bit of a difference. Try and find possibly um, a wee outside edge or even something that is slightly mistimed. But again, with the field up in the situation we are in, it does make for easy pickings if the ball is in the wrong spot. And again, Watson's done the right thing. He's gone and got the boundary ball in the second ball of the over, which does mean that the rest of the over, you know, you can be a little bit more cautious, and that's what they have done so far. Six off three, it's not the worst thing in the world, and we need to go and clamp things down because we want to go. We want to be, you know, that economical guy. We want to be that guy that picked up that early wicket of Warner. We want to be that guy that is going to go and take the wickets, keep the runs down, because I think primarily that is our job in the side. Our job in the side is to be the economical bowler and get the other bowler is in from the other end. We have done that so far this over. We have just gone for six. We don't want to go and uh, and ruin it now, which we haven't gone and done. Oh! Warner! Oh, not Warner, Wagner! What are you doing? Wag's getting in the way. A direct hit and he was probably gone. Direct hit and he was probably gone. But uh, Wag's just getting in the way. And that is unbelievable. Speaking of Neil Wagner, I did read... Um, I'm trying to think when it was. I think it was Wednesday morning. I'm not sure if there have been any games uh, since then in the county championship. But Warner actually, sorry, Wagner. 
My God, my words are all over the place this morning. I just cannot get it right. Wagner leading the wicket-taking charts in Division 1 of the County Championship, which is a very good thing um, for New Zealand cricket because, you know, he's one of those guys. It is it is very hard, the makeup of the New Zealand Test side now. And I think, ideally, <sighs> ideally, if that was flicked a little bit quicker, it would have been out. But it is very, very hard to, to determine what to do, you know, with this New Zealand side. Um, there is a lot of talk about Santner, you know, being in the team and where he will bat. And I think he does need to be in the test team because he does give us uh, not just a, a spinning option, but he is also very handy with the bat as well. So personally, I would like to see him. And things are going to change a lot now that Brendan McCullum has retired. And it will be interesting to see what happens uh, when the first test of the summer comes around. But it will be very interesting to see what happens because... Personally, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, a couple of all-rounders in the side. Obviously, I think Corey Anderson is going to be our number six. I think he has proven himself there. Um, so then, I mean, that leaves room for Santner. BJ Watling could possibly move up a couple of places, bat at five. I wouldn't mind that because technically he is a very good batsman. But I really want to see Santner squeezed in and then four seam bowling options because I think our seam bowling stocks are very strong and they are our strong point and that is what is going to help us get our 20 wickets that we do require in test matches. Speaking of the man, Wags, he is coming in to have a bowl now and Shane Watson actually hit 100 in this game. Whether it will be enough, I don't think it was. It was not enough. That is so, so heartbreaking for Watson. 106 not out of 55 deliveries. New Zealand win by five runs and win the series 2-1. to one. So that is just... Just incredible, incredible scenes. Only the three wickets. So that's a little bit, a uh, little bit disturbing for us that we did only manage to go and pick up three wickets when they were chasing a relatively high score as well. But anyway, guys, we're going to wrap things up here. Do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to leave a like. If you are new, please do subscribe. Make sure you check out my Facebook and Twitter links that can be found down below in the description. Hope you guys had a good week so far and have a good weekend planned ahead. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. I've got Cricket Coach 2014 coming your guys' way. Make sure you do not miss that.